All right, so it's Mr. Rops here, and we are going to do some linearization of data. And so we have a maximum speed of canoe with different numbers of rowers is quoted in the table below. So I have four, six, ten rowers in my boat, and this is the maximum speed that they can get, and it's in kilometers per hour, and my variable is s. And so um, the first part, a part says draw a scatter plot of s against n and of log s against log n. And what do we notice about this? And so um, this little note, it doesn't matter if we log, use log or ln, or natural log, you'll end up with the same conceptual scenario at the end. The numbers will be slightly different, but it works all the same. But because this one specifically says log s to log n, we are going to have to use log. So here is L1 and L2, which is in my computer or calculator already. Here's L1, L2. And so I am going to plot that, plot one, and let's turn on L1 and L2. And then I'm gonna to zoom to number nine, which is the statistics window. And I'll turn off my graphs and let's see what we have. So I have this scenario here and I can see it looks pretty linear, but I can also see that there's a bend to it. All right, so let me just pull this over here for a moment. Then I want to also do log s versus log n. So if I go back to my lists, I'm going to go on top of 3, and I'm going to go log of L1. And then I'm going to go to log, to, I'm going to do the log of L2. And so now, just keeping track of what I have, this is L3 and this is L4. I want to sketch this scenario. So I go back to my stat plot. I'm going to go to the plot two and turn it on. I'm going to go L3 and L4. And I'm also going to go black back to plot one and turn it off just momentarily. And so we'll turn it off and I'm going to zoom to statistics. And when I look at this graph here, what I notice is that this one is far straighter than this. This has a slight bend, but this is more straight. So I believe that the logarithm logarithm graph is a better scenario. What do you notice about this? It is a linear relationship. Okay, so now, since I know the log log graph is going to be linear, Let's get the linear equation of log s on log n. So if I go to my statistics, I'm going to calculate the linear regression, which is number 4. L3 is log is my x value. Keeping track of my variables. And L4, oh, L3, oh my goodness. And L4. And let's put the regression equation into y1 so I can have the equation and let us hit enter on that. Note my r squared value is really high. I'm going to pull this over here so we can refer to it if needed. And so state the linear equation. Well, I know that log s is equal to 0 0.396 log log n plus 0 0.703 to three significant figures. And so this is the linear relationship between the two logs. Now, <clears throat> no, the calculator doesn't know that we've done logarithms. It has no idea. It just looks at numbers. So we have to keep track of the logarithms ourselves. Okay, so moving to C part says, use this model, compute the maximum speed if there are 12 rowers. Well, N is my rower, so if I'm going to take 12 and plug it in for n. So then I know that log s is equal to 0 0.396 log of 12 plus 0 0.703. So if I'm going, the calculator believes that this whole thing here is x. So if I want to use my y1, which is here, if I go if I use my function notation idea, I'm going to use y1. I'm going to put in log 12. 
there's my 12 rowers. And so what I get, I get that the log of s is equal to 1.13. So then I have to convert that to s. In order to solve this, I raise it to the power of 10. So s is going to be 10 to the 1, 1.13, 3. And so s will be, if I take this value to the power of 10, take all my decimals so I can get this. And so I know that the speed is going to be 13.5 kilometers per hour is the predicted maximum speed if I have 12 rowers. So I have to keep track of my logs and when I put it in as a log and when I take it out as a log and so on and so forth. All right, continuing on here. Now that we've got this value, let us go and find the equation that connects s and n. So we have this logarithm equation here, this whole thing here. I want to put it in terms of s and n. So I want s equal to stuff with an n in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this exponent, or sorry, I'll start here, this value, and I'm going to put the exponent on n. So I'm going to say log s, well, that may not explain the reason why I'm going to do that. I'm thinking too far ahead. If I want to get rid of logarithm, we'll start all over again here. If I'm going to do the logarithm, I'm going to raise everything to the power of 10. So if I go 10 log s is going to be equal to 10, 0 0.396 log n plus 0 0.703. And if I simplify the scenario here, this becomes s. In order to do this side, well, I'm going to take this exponent here, and I'm going to put it up here to the n. So I'm going to go log n to the power of 0.396. And then, because it's adding, it's going to be times 10 to the power of 0, 7, 0, 3. And so, continuing along, I get s. When I do this here, I know that the log base 10 and the exponential of 10 cancel out, and it's going to be n to the power of 0 0.396 times, well, 10 to the power of, I'm going to go 10 to the power of, well, this 7, 0 was my b value. I can go to statistics. No, sorry, I can go to variables. My statistic variables, number 5. My regression equation variables, and it was number 3. And that will be 5.04. So what I can say now is that s is equal to 5.04 n 0. 396. Now what I recognize here is that this is a power regression model. Okay, and so what I could have done, I could have gone from my menu of L1 and L2, I could have done a power regression on these two, and if I do it, I should end up with the same. I'm going to do L1 and L2. Keeping my fingers crossed, I should end up with the same, and I do. I get 5.04 to the power of 3.96. And then finally, if I want to predict the maximum speed the canoe can go if there's eight rowers, well, this is S is going to, at N, I'm going to get 5.04 times 8 to the 0 0.96. I'm going to do that calculation. I didn't, if I go second enter, I can go back to here. Let's put it into y2. And so now if I go to my y2 value and put in 8, it will keep all the decimals for me, and I can predict that it is 11.5 kilometers per hour. So overall, 
when we are trying to linearize data, we compare our different scatter plots, and we want it to be as straight as possible. And if there's a bend in it, we can probably morph it somehow to make it into a line. This time we did logarithm, logarithm. When we do logarithm, logarithm, it ends up being a power function. 